Hey guys, Jessica here, the Fright Family Coach. In today's video, we're talking about what to do when your cat won't eat. Now, <sighs> breaks my little heart actually because I know that cats are oftentimes very elusive and they are very, very good at hiding when they don't feel good. So if they're not eating, then they probably haven't been feeling good for a while. So I'm going to link in the description below Dr. Karen Becker's blog on this, which is where I drew the inspiration from this video. So I do hope you check out that blog, but stick with me in this video because we're gonna talk about what to do when your cat won't eat. All right guys, before we get into the content, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed to my channel and that you're following me on Patreon, first link in the description. But here we go, let's get into the content. So according to Dr. Becker, who is an integrated veterinarian who I absolutely love, and if you are not familiar with her, I definitely recommend familiarizing yourself with her. She is the world's most followed veterinarian and an integrated veterinarian, which I love. And she wrote the blog that inspired this video all about helping, you know, figuring out what to do when your cat won't eat. So she says that one of the first signs of illness in your cat is their lack of appetite. Now, in my experience with my own cats, it's actually not necessarily one of the first signs. Your cat probably hasn't been feeling well for a while, but it is definitely something that you don't want to take lightly and one of the most significant signs that is you know going to send a red flag in your brain to ooh we probably need to get to the vet right so what do we do when our cat doesn't want to eat first thing we want to know is that we should not let this go on for very long because cats today's cats are very much at risk for something called hepatic lipidosis and this is basically fatty liver disease so when your cat doesn't take in food for an extended period of time, meaning a couple of days, the liver starts to break down and become like hoard fat cells. And it's often called fatty liver because of that. So it is incredibly important to be on top of your, you know, understand and know what's going on with your cat's eating habits as well as your cat's bathroom habits. These are often two very, very big indicators that something is wrong and we need to go see the veterinarian. What's really dangerous for cats is that when they stop eating, it like, it spirals because their lack of appetite, even if it's a small window, tell you know they stop eating and the and the longer they go without eating the more their body feels bad and the more they don't want to eat so it's like a spiral effect right they're spiraling down so we want to get if your cat stops eating we want to get on top of this quick so the first thing we want to do is assess the situation has something changed um, environmentally what stressors could be affecting your cat right is there a new member of the household whether that's a human or another animal um, did you have recently have a party have you had a lot of visitors did you have you know somebody come stay at your house for a day or a couple of days or maybe somebody left and has been gone for a while or maybe somebody in the house has has gone on vacation or left to go to college somebody left the house or maybe and this happened to me a few years back there is a cat outside that has been visiting your yard and your cat can either see it or smell it and that has caused stress for your cat. Maybe you moved into a new house or apartment. Um, also, it's stressful getting older so that can sometimes happen with your cat. Definitely something you want to talk to your vet more about in detail. Or maybe it's just a change to your daily schedule or routine. Or maybe you got a new piece of furniture. Anything that has changed in your environment is potentially a stressor for your cat and you want to take that into consideration. Dr. Becker also says something as simple as changing the location of your cat's food bowl or water bowl or litter box can be a huge stressor for your cat. So once you assess the situation, what do you do next? Well, one, the first thing you want to do is offer a variety of foods to your cat. So whenever possible, you want to feed smaller but more frequent meals to your cat and provide options for your cat in those meals. You also want to change things up a little bit with your cat. Maybe your cat is bored. Maybe you want to use puzzle feeders or hunting feeders, which I love. If you're not familiar with hunting feeders, I will link a couple videos in the description um, where I have talked about hunting feeders love these for our cats so maybe something new and novel will help your cat regain their appetite if you have a multi-cat household feed everyone separately everyone needs to eat off their own plate 
in their own space. Don't try to line everyone up and feed them all together off of one plate. Let them spread out and eat on their own. That just eating together is not natural for cats and can be a stressor in and of itself. Also, if at all possible, feed your cat from an elevated position. You know, being on the ground level can be a stressor for your cat because they're easy prey on the ground. They're an easy target, right? That's genetically, like cats, have not been domesticated like dogs have and they still have those very wild instincts in them so when they're up higher they feel safer so if at all possible feed from an elevated position also try to feed your cat in the quietest calmest area possible so don't feed next to loud noisy appliances don't feed in high traffic areas you know, if you need to take the spare bedroom where nobody goes or frequents that is in the back of the house where it is the quietest, then maybe you need to do that. So these reduce the amount of stress on your cat as much as possible. Also put food in locations that encourage climbing and stretching for your cat. That's a very soothing and natural activity for your cat to do. We want to encourage that. We also want to make sure that we are taking time every day to play with our cat. One thing I will say is that have a good play session with your cat and at the end of the play session provide your cat with their food or even a treat because that is mimicking natural hunting behavior for your cat so the more we can mimic mimic their natural behaviors the better off your cat is going to be of course if your cat suddenly stops eating we definitely want to go to the veterinarian because there could be some underlying medical condition and these vary so we definitely want to if your cat stops eating call the vet assess the situation, call the vet. That is really, I wanna drive that home in this video, okay? Some underlying medical conditions that could cause your cat to stop eating or are upper respiratory infections, nasal tumors or polyps, gum disease or some sort of oral infection, something going on in their mouth, that's common, especially if you're not feeding raw bones to your cat, especially if you're not taking, you know, brushing your cat's teeth often. We want to take good care of their dental health and hygiene. Kibble is not good for dental hygiene or dental health, so take that into consideration as well. Um, some Something going on with their GI tract, whether it's just GI upset or cancer in their GI tract or a tumor or a polyp in their GI tract, something going on with their uh, gastrointestinal system is often associated with symptoms such as not eating. Also congestive heart failure. So there are lots of potential underlying medical conditions that could be causing the symptom of your cat not eating. So definitely get into your veterinarian as soon as possible. A couple of things you can do for your cat to try to entice them to eat, especially once we have gone to the vet and ruled out hopefully any medical conditions, or if you have found out that your cat does unfortunately have a medical condition but you still need to get your cat to eat, here are some things we can do. Number one is warming your cat's food to room temperature. So that doesn't mean, you know, boiling the food or, and I certainly never recommend microwaving it, but um, possibly putting it in a container and submerging it in warm water to heat it up. That would be a good way to do it. But warming it to room temperature is one, going to be more natural for your cat to eat it that way because your cat as a predator is used to naturally in the wild eating prey that it has killed, so that's going to be body temperature. Also, it's going to allow the aroma of that food to come out more, so hopefully that will entice your cat to eat more. You can also lure your cat to eat with special foods that you know your cat likes, like maybe some boiled chicken or maybe some canned salmon or canned sardines. If you do get um, any canned fish, make sure it's canned with no salt added, and I prefer canned in water my personal preference. So those are some things you can entice your cat with to hopefully get their appetite going, get it started, and then they'll start eating their regular food. Which kind of leads into the next tip, which is offering them some sort of canned food that has a much small, stronger aroma. I would also recommend, and so does Dr. Becker, feeding off of a plate. And you might actually want to get a small paper plate because cats often associate 
um, feelings, especially negative feelings, um, or you know, if they don't feel good, there's something wrong with their GI system, they're just, their tummy's upset, whatever it may be, they can associate that very quickly with an object such as their food bowl or their litter box. So grabbing a small paper plate is going to help to, if there is a bad feeling or memory associated with their food bowl, then they may not want to eat out of it anymore. So try on a paper plate, and I do say plate versus bowl because of whisker stress. So buy a selection, buy a variety of canned cat foods that are healthy and nutritious for your cat, hopefully, so that you can give your cat a variety of foods to try. You can also do a homemade food um, for your cat. There are tons of recipes out there on that. Also, make bone broth for your cat. If you don't know how to do that, I do have a video on my channel, so I will link it below. Bone broth can be a great addition even to their regular food, but you can also offer it to them just as is plain bone broth. That is incredibly nutritious and hopeful, and, and it has a good aroma for your cat as well. So just make sure when you're making bone broth that it is for your cat and it's not a bone broth made for con human consumption. You don't want any salt added. You don't want it made with onions. So definitely check out um, the bone broth video I have on my channel. Again, I will link it in the description. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful and I hope, I truly hope it helps somebody out there who is having issues with their cat, maybe not eating. Again, my number one piece of advice is to call your vet right away because this can be very dangerous for your cat. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you give it a thumbs up and I hope you hit that subscribe button. If it's red, click it and turn it gray, then click the bell and select all notifications. Thank you so much for being here. I do hope to see you on Patreon as well. Check my link tree in the description for all the other links. I'll see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.